Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Chini United Methodist Church and to worship. I'm Pastor Damien Carruthers, and I'm joined by Karen Lincoln today, our liturgist. And of course, as every Sunday, a special welcome to all of you watching online. Um, I was asked to say special greetings to my grandma. Hello. Okay, I will do that. <laughs> Cost her 10 bucks. Um, <laughs> It is our third week in Advent and in our book study, Celebrating Abundance, by Walter Brueggemann. And the title for the sermon today is Celebrating Revolution. Are you ready? Okay. Doesn't sound like that. Um, but before we start with the service, we have a couple of announcements. Today at 3 p.m. is what? <laughs> okay. Good, I hope you all will come. It, 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 it's worth it, that's what I want to say. We had an uh, awesome practice yesterday and I can just recommend today, 3 p.m. here, Christmas Cantata. A little reminder, Christmas Eve, two services, one at 5.30, uh, more family oriented, and one traditional one at 7.30, and both times with candle lightning. And on Christmas Day, we invite you to a cozy Christmas carol singing and reflecting on letting go service. Does that make sense? What's that? Okay, good. Um, at 10 a.m. Um, and you're invited to bring blankets, pillows, if you want, your pajamas. Um, and we will have hot chocolate, hot tea, and hot coffee before we start with the service. And if you come and want to join and drink something in the sanctuary, bring your travel mug, or we have some disposable ones here as well. So we we're going to sit together, share some songs, some ideas, and we'll be, we'll be nice. So next Sunday. And uh, the week after that, <clears throat> um, we will have no service on January 1st, but one on New Year's Eve at 4 30 p.m. Um, we will have communion and some other things. And after that, you are invited to a New Year's potluck. It's organized by Sarah Lynn. And I think it's soup, isn't it? Like, bring soup. Yeah. As Joanna plays our prelude, may we use the time to prepare our hearts for worship, breathing out the concerns we may have come with and breathing in the spirit of the one we meet here.
Would you all please stand as you are able and join with me in the call to worship. Your part will be in bold. Our souls magnify the Lord and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. God's mercy is for those who trust him from generation to generation. God has shown faithfulness to those who embrace his ways. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away. Have hope, for God will soon come down to earth and make all things new. memory is long, and as we come to the last Sunday of Advent, we recall the many times that we have been here before with still so much to do and so much love left unexpressed, but we know and proclaim God's love endures forever in a world where you never reach and dry and brittle. God's love is the one reality on which we Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shoal or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know even when we aren't sure ourselves. God wants us to experience God's presence even when we think we can handle it life on our own. God sends us signs of his, God's presence with us. 
All we need to do is to keep our eyes opened and look. Look, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angels of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. And so we light the fourth candle in eager anticipation of God's greatest promise fulfilled. What else could we do but to name this candle hope? Please join with me in our Advent hymn, Light the Advent Candle. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, 
and his glory above all heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. The word of life. Thanks be to God. As a tradition, I would like you to pray for each other. So have a look to the left and to the right who is sitting next to you. And if you don't know her or his name, please ask so that you can pray for that person. Pray for the person on the right and or on the left that God may open up their hearts to hear the gospel today. And pray for yourself that the Holy Spirit may show you where there is a need of change in your life as a Christian. Amen. Friends, we are in our last week of Advent and in our series celebrating abundance. So, what is this last week in Brueggemann's book about? Let me give you a little summary one more time. 
The theme of this last week could be named Surrendering to God's Purpose. The last week's reading starts with a passage from Philippians, which Brighamon called a love letter concerning work in progress. We are work in progress. This Advent time is about referring our life back to God, who has given it to us in the first place. Our lives are not our own. They belong to God, whose plan for us and all of creation is much bigger than we can understand. So Advent is a time of surrendering ourselves to God and embracing the new world we have already received. When the world seems hopeless, we have hope because God has shown his radical love and faithfulness to us by sending his Son. So we get reminded of what we celebrate on Christmas Eve, God's fresh decision to come into this world. As Brueggemann writes, not as a threat, but as a child, not in pride, but in a way almost unnoticed by the world. And this week, Brueggemann calls us to boldly step into God's future by betting on the baby. This means letting God break our old patterns and expectations, like God did for Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds when Jesus was sent to disrupt and transform their lives. Betting on the baby means that we do not settle for the world as it is, but we allow ourselves to be powerfully displaced in new and healing and liberating ways by Jesus. So far, so good. So this is Advent, celebrating this coming of God into this world, celebrating abundance, and celebrating the second coming of Jesus Christ. So in our last sermon of this series, I would like to summarize what we have heard so far and what we can take away from that. Therefore, I would like to start much earlier at the beginning of all for today. Because when I went to our book study group on Tuesday, I was asked about Advent in general. What does Advent even mean? Why do we have that every year? So Advent is from the Latin word Adventus. Now it pays off that I studied Latin for seven years. <laughs> it is from the Latin word Adventus and it just means coming or arrival. So Advent is about waiting for something important, for something to arrive. And we are waiting for Jesus to arrive. Huh? I thought Jesus already arrived? You may think right now, that's true. Advent is for, first and foremost a time of remembrance. Just as we always celebrate the Lord's Supper to remember the last meal with Jesus and what Jesus did for us, Advent is meant to remind us. So the time of Advent should remind us of John the Baptist, who called us to prepare for the coming of Jesus. And Christmas should remind us that over 2,000 years ago, God set out on the road to us, becoming a human being like us, to show his boundless love. And this is why there is always a fight between pastors and congregations in Advent and Christmas, because we as pastors think we should sing Advent songs in the Advent season and Christmas songs on Christmas. <laughs> and this is sometimes, that you remember, maybe we're missing already like Christmas songs, like Joy to the World and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> Come on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and you can sing as much as you want. <laughs> there's a time for Advent and there's a time for Christmas. So actually, we are waiting for two things at the same time. As I said, we are waiting to celebrate Christmas, like in remembrance that Jesus was born. And we are waiting for Jesus to come back. We call that the second coming. 
and we hope that he will fix everything that is wrong with the world. Or in Brueggemann's words, we are waiting for the new reality, the newness, which is already on its way. And the second coming of Jesus is a little scary. And most of us don't mind waiting a bit for that. But it's hard to wait for Christmas, isn't it? Especially if you're excited about presents. <laughs> and I remember when I was a preschool kid, we as Germans celebrate Christmas mainly on Christmas Eve. Um, this is also the time when we get our presents. So we weren't ch churchgoers at that time, not at all. But at Christmas, my grandma would take me to church, just the two of us. Grandpa already had some, you know, <laughs> water, sorry. <laughs> I always forget that they are watching. <laughs> um, maybe I change something here. <laughs> okay. So, when we were at church, I couldn't wait to get back. The whole family had to gather upstairs until we heard the little Christmas bell ringing. And that meant the presents are ready. I was the only child and the only grandchild. So sometimes, when I was a little bit older, someone had the idea to eat first. <laughs> and then exchange Christmas presents. I was like, what? <laughs> I couldn't wait for that. So I just, I just loved getting presents. And the good thing is, it wasn't expected of me to make some on my own. Because as a child, nobody expects that. It's enough to write, to, to paint a, an awful, ugly picture. <laughs> so Christmas is easy when you're a kid things get more complicated later. Now, it is more complicated than we, when we were little. As mature Christians, we are called to get our hearts ready for Christmas, for the newness which is on its way. And that is probably the core statement Brueggemann did in his book. Showing us ways of preparing our hearts for this newness, this new reality that comes and started with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And therefore, we are asked to stop rushing around. Stop making lists. Stop buying gifts and ponder the wonder of God coming to earth as a human being. We are being asked to make room for the Christ child in our lives in our hearts. That's why we always sing in Germany one Advent song which is called Open up the gates of your heart so that the Lord can enter it. Advent is also about getting ready to meet the grown-up Jesus. We will see him when he comes again and the world as we know it passes away. Or we will see him when we die and our lives as we know them pass away. So Advent is about being ready for whatever is coming and not knowing when it will be. We are waiting for the time that Isaiah promised when swords really will be pounded into plows because wars will be a thing of the past. We are waiting for a time when the lion will lie down with the lamb and the lamb will not be afraid. We are waiting for a time when the people of the church are not thinking in different traditions, biblical interpretations, or theological differences, but instead being one body in Jesus Christ. And we are waiting for the time when Democrats and Republicans can have supper together without fighting. <laughs> waiting is hard. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> yes. The early Christians also had a hard time waiting. We can read about that in the Gospel of Matthew, for instance. Let me read a part of that. Matthew 24, the verses 36 to 44. 
But about that day, an hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night a thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Matthew wrote his Gospel in the early 80s of the first century, about 50 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. And like most early Christian communities, Matthew's congregation had been expecting Jesus to return right away. They thought they were in that time that Jesus would come again. And some scholars think that the Gospels were written in part to encourage Christians who were confused and discouraged by Jesus' delayed return. And for this reason, Matthew, like Mark and Luke, devotes a section of his Gospel to exhorting his congregation to stay awake, keep prepared, and wait with anticipation for Jesus' return. And if they aren't watching and waiting, Matthew suggests they might miss Jesus' second coming or they might not be ready. The trouble is that 2,000 years later, we have been waiting an awfully long time. <laughs> so long, in fact, that most people aren't waiting anymore. Are you waiting? Are you really waiting? Most people have given up waiting for Jesus and expecting his return. I mean, really, if we can't even wait until after Thanksgiving, until Friday morning to shop for deals, how do we expect our people to keep waiting for two millennia for Jesus to come back? It's hard, but we are being told to wait. We are being reminded to stay awake. No one, Jesus says at the beginning of the passage, knows when the Lord will come. The angels don't know. Jesus himself does not even know. Nobody. Except the Father. And we are given the frightening example of Noah's ark. Let me read that part again. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. So there was a flood and it was pretty much the end of the world for most people. They didn't know it was coming and they perished in watery death. And Jesus says the end is coming like a thief in the night and you need to stay awake. And at the end of the passage, Jesus repeats that the Son of Man will come at an unexpected hour. And it's difficult to think about meeting Jesus when he comes again. Can you imagine that? Although it is a good thing, it means life as you have always known it is over. <coughs> We will meet Jesus when he comes back to rule over heaven and earth, or we will meet him before that when we breathe our last breath. Either way, we do not know when that will be. Staying awake means being ready. It means leaving your life in such a way that you're not afraid of the end. Staying awake means living in a way that leaves you unafraid to face the Lord. 
You know, part of my job as a pastor is to plan and preside over funerals, as you probably know. And I remember well my first funeral. I was nervous, but it was okay. The man was over 80 and has lived his life. But the second funeral I had to do was hard. It was a woman who was just 36, uh, 63, I'm sorry, 63. And she died suddenly. And especially when people die who are younger than my grandparents or parents, it makes me think of my own death. Funerals in general remind you that you do not have an unlimited number of days on this earth. And interestingly, most people say they would like to go to bed, fall asleep and not wake up again. This would be a nice death. But is that so nice to the people who stay behind? I believe there is a problem with sudden death. You don't get a chance to say goodbye to people. You don't get to make amends if you are not on good terms with someone you love. And thinking about that is important. You don't get to choose how you die or when Jesus comes back. So the only solution is to be ready right now. The only solution is to say you're sorry when you hurt someone and do your best to make it right. Now. The only solution is to make a corner of the world a little better right now because you are not guaranteed another chance. You might get tomorrow. You might get a thousand tomorrows but you might not. And this could be your only day to make the world a godlier place. We had better stay awake and be prepared. Because none of us are going to live forever. None of us knows when Jesus will come back. And it sounds like a threat when Jesus says the end will come like a thief in the night so you had better wake up. It might be a threat, but it's also a promise. It's a promise like Christmas morning is a promise. It's a promise like the first day of vacation is a promise. Or the day your finals at school are over is a promise. Wake up. Stop waiting to live a life full of love and hope. Wake up because you have no idea the blessings and wonders this very day will hold, what this newness will bring. And I don't know how many days you have left, but you have this one. This is a good day to do something spectacular, something loving and generous in the name of the Lord. Now is the time to celebrate this revolution got started. As we heard, he raises, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Even the angels don't know how many days we will get. But we know that we had better stay awake and not miss any of them. Wake up. It's time to join God's revolution and celebrate abundance. Amen. Now, if you will stand as you are able, and join me in singing Star Child. Star child, bird child, go between of God, love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Street child, beat child, no place left to go. Her 
hurt, child, you child, no one wants to know. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Grown child, old child, memory full of years, sad child, lost child, story told in tears. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Spare child, spoiled child, having wanting more, wise child, faith child, knowing what's in store. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Hope for peace, child, God's stupendous sign, down to earth, child, stars, stars that shine. This year, this year, let the day our gratitude by returning a portion of all God has given us for the work of his kingdom. And I invite the ashes to come forward to receive our financial gifts. And I invite all of us to use this time to silently offer gifts of time and talent as well in God's service. Praise the Spirit, oh 
Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Holy God of hope and promise, when the children were in deep despair, you promised them a sign, the indication of a Savior coming into their midst. As we bring you our tithes and offerings this day, many of us are discouraged and don't have much hope things will change. We need your sign. We need your son not as simply a reminder of history, but as a new direction, a revolution of love that starts in our hearts, a resurrection of compassion that looks beyond self and the accumulation of more and more things that don't satisfy. We need what only a Savior can give us. In the Savior's name we pray. Amen. Then let us pray together. I will um, uh, start. <laughs> Just had a, a hanger. Um, I will start, and you will join me in the bold, please. In the hushed anticipation of your coming, O Lord, remind us that you are always with us and hear us when we pray. We pray for our church here in Chini, that we are walking your paths of love, compassion, justice, and righteousness, so that we are a good testimony of the gospel. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and you, O God, shall judge between the nations. We pray for our nation and all nations, that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. We pray especially for the people in Ukraine who will have a totally different Christmas, maybe even a hopeless one. We pray for peace, hope, and sanity. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In your kingdom, O Lord, wolves lay down with the lambs, and children play with serpents without fear. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and those in distress of any kind that you would heal all injuries, comfort all grief, and settle all wrongs. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In the fullness of time, O God, you sent your Son to be born of our sister Mary, and his name was Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for your presence with us, and we pray that you might be always present with those whom we love, but see no longer. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
before I um, speak the benediction, I would like to ask, where do you have to be at 3 p.m. today? <laughs> right here, at Christmas Cantata. That's right. <laughs> God's presence and promises are real, brothers and sisters. So go now into God's world, trusting in God's love and placing your hope in God. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.